Welcome to this video. My name's Phil and I am a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln in England and I wanted to have a look at binary stars and how they actually form and the reason I want to have a look at this is because they're not particularly rare so most or quite a lot of stars actually are in multiple star systems so not just in binary systems where you've got two you could be in triple systems stars that are in four systems and even greater still but binary star systems are relatively common and I wanted to actually visit how they actually form if they're just a single star. Now, when we look at star formation, the general kind of idea of how stars form is that they will form in these giant molecular gas clouds. Now, this is the Orion Nebula. And if you look carefully and zoom in on some of these stars, you see some of them are blue. So the blue stars are quite young. They're obviously quite hot. They don't live very long. If you see blue stars, bright blue stars, then they're generally going to be quite young and newly formed. And there's quite a lot of those stars in the Orion Nebula. And this is kind of a, a stellar nursery, really, which is where stars are going to form. And actually, if you zoom in really close to some of these, these are stars that aren't even formed yet. They're still forming. And you can actually see these protoplanetary disks around them where the planets are actually forming as well. So anyway, this is a kind of sort of area where we expect stars to form. Now, again, simplifying it even further, we expect that these stars form from a gravitational collapse of one of these gas clouds. So at some point, the cloud will begin to collapse under its own gravity and it will have a runaway collapse where it will keep collapsing until the point where you actually end up with a very dense central part which gets hot enough to then start hydrogen fusion, which is then your star. That's kind of how a star really forms. And once that star is formed, then it's going to end up in hydrostatic equilibrium. And actually, a gas cloud before it collapses, if it's not collapsing and it's somewhat static, then it will also be in hydrostatic equilibrium, which is where gravitational forces are then balanced by an opposing pressure. Um, with a star, this is going to be like an outward radiative pressure and it will balance against the gravity and it will hold it there in equilibrium. Now, this spherical cloud, and we're going to assume it's a spherical cloud, which we know is not going to be true realistically, but it's the easiest one to actually assume. And if that then starts to collapse, it means that the gravitational forces are overcoming that outward pressure. And then it basically, the year this runaway collapse where it will collapse until some outward force then balances out against the gravity basically and with a star that basically means that it starts to heat up and it will start to generate some energy internally and it then begins to balance that gravitational force and that will kind of limit its collapse basically so that's how we expect a star to actually form from a spherical cloud which again we don't know it's not exactly true and so yeah basically here you've got a, a star that's basically formed at the center there. So the outward relative pressure is balancing your gravity. Now, you can work out an approximate mass of a cloud when this actually occurs. And this can be what well, is known as like the genes mass. So above a certain mass, then the gravitational forces are going to essentially overcome any thermal expansion energy and it will actually collapse. If it's below that genes mass, then it won't actually undergo a, a, a gravitational collapse. Like it might oscillate, um, but it won't actually collapse down to a star. So it needs to be above a certain mass, and you can approximately work that out from the genes mass. And the genes length is kind of the same thing, but it's just a radius of the cloud, where if it's greater than this, then you're going to get a gravitational collapse. And it, it's useful for getting a, an approximation of the sort of size of cloud where you may actually end up with a collapse before. So it, it's pretty rough, but it gives us a general idea when the cloud might actually collapse. And that's obviously a single cloud. And if that happens, as that cloud is collapsing, there may be some net rotation to that cloud. So it would be much larger, the cloud, than the actual star that is formed. And stars, we know, rotate like the sun. And if it has some rotation to start with, it won't really look like it's rotating much as it starts to collapse then you're going to conserve that angular momentum and it actually starts to spin up faster and it actually flattens to a disk-like structure. 
which would be like a proto planetary disk or circumstellar disk and that is then where the planets form around the actual star so you end up with these disks around the star the proto star because at this point here it's not an actual star it's a proto star because it isn't undergoing hydrogen fusion in its core and once it does do that it will generate a significant outward uh, like stellar wind which will then blow away all of that gas leaving just dust planets and asteroids up there really so in that process it is possible that that disk can fragment so if you have a, a fairly massive disk that is quite thin then it can become locally gravitationally unstable so a bit like the cloud this gas cloud we had where it would collapse under its own gravity there are certain situations where this can occur in the actual disk itself and you get a disk fragmentation due to a local gravitational instability and you end up with essentially two stars forming in the disk and because they're already kind of in this rotating system you end up with a binary star system is an orbit and a common system that's one way you can actually get a binary star form is from a fragmentation of that disk during the star formation process of a single star then the other one is that as that rotating gas cloud is collapsing that can also fragment as well so before it gets to kind of the disk stage you can get fragmentation in the actual larger gas cloud and you get two localized collapses and because the gas cloud is also rotating as well then you end up with a binary system as well it's also worth noting that in this scenario you can actually get your triple star systems and greater actually so it's not just always a binary star system so fragmentation of a rotating collapsing gas cloud can also give rise to a binary star system and then the other one which is probably rarer is that you can get the dynamical capture of a star around a single star so let's say that you had two stars formed independently on their own from that collapse of a gas cloud if those stars then get quite close to each other then there's the possibility that they can gravitationally capture each other so they end up close enough to be influenced by each other's gravitational um, forces and they end up on new orbits and essentially orbiting each other and if they actually form from a larger cloud then they could be somewhat clustered anyway so this actually again is a, is a plausible situation or scenario for forming a binary star system now the only problem with planets here around binary stars is it can be somewhat difficult to actually form them so if you've got a, a disk around a binary star system which we have actually discovered these disks and they're kind of warped and distorted and that makes it very difficult for the planets to form because you're constantly disrupting the disk and preventing planets from actually forming so it can be quite difficult to actually form planets around these binary star systems so the other scenario is that actually they they kind of end up being captured a bit like the star that gets captured around uh, another star you can get the dynamical capture of a planet a rogue planet that was maybe thrown out of its other planet or of its other system again it, it came close enough to be gravitationally captured by the binary star system and you end up with a planet around the outside there so that is one scenario you can actually get a planet in situ formation again it is going to be problematic because that disk actually is distorted where they would naturally form so anyway thank you for watching and if you enjoy then do check out some of the other